Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to install the Photo GIMP patch by Dio Linux for Mac. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.14 which is the latest version of GIMP for the Mac at the time of this video. Before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here, my GIMP book of layers, and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com, and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So in my last tutorial, which is how to download PhotoGimp for Windows, I went over the fact that PhotoGimp is a free patch that makes it a lot easier to switch from Photoshop to GIMP. It does this by swapping out GIMP's shortcut keys with Photoshop shortcut keys. It also simplifies the GIMP user interface by simplifying the toolbox area, changing up the icon theme. It also declutters the canvas area. And finally, it installs tons of free plugins, fonts, and brushes, so it just gives you access to a bit more resources. As I also mentioned in that last tutorial, some of the fonts do not have commercial licenses. So if you're gonna use the fonts for commercial purposes, check the license for each individual font before you use it in a commercial setting. For starters, you're going to want to navigate to the Photo GIMP link here on GitHub. This is from Dio Linux, as I mentioned. And you can scroll down the page here. Here's the splash screen. Here's what comes with this patch. And there's some other information if you scroll below, but to download this, you're going to click on this green button labeled code. And then you'll come down here and click download zip. So this is going to download a zip file to your downloads folder. I'll open up a finder window here just to show you guys. So here, I'm inside of my main home folder here, and here is my downloads folder. So here you'll see my photo gimp-master.zip file. In Mac, just double click this to unzip it. And here is the unzipped folder. And if I click this little drop down arrow, we could see what's inside of here. But actually the issue is there are some hidden folders in here. So this is different from Windows. The whole installation process basically is gonna be different from Windows for the most part. But there's going to be some hidden files in here. So we need to see those files to be able to move forward. So I'll hit Command Shift and then the dot key or the period key. And here you can see our hidden files. Here is the var file, so I'm going to click on this. This is the folder we need to enter. There's an app folder here. We'll click the drop down for that. org.gimp.gimp, and then config, and finally the gimp folder. And here is the 2.10 folder. This is the folder we're going to need to install this into gimp. And if you have gimp open right now, which I do, so here is gimp. I'm using 2.10.14, which as I mentioned, is the latest version of gimp for Mac at the time of this tutorial. So there are some features that aren't going to properly display, which you'll see once we install photo gimp here, but this is the default layout. So let me close out gimp. I'll come up top here and go to quit gimp. And I will need another finder window. I can just come back to the original finder window we were working in. And now I'll navigate over to Applications, and here is our GIMP folder. So what I need to do is go to Go, Go to Folder, and you're going to want to type this exactly as you see it, so it's the little tilde key, forward slash, and then Library, and I'll click Go. So that'll take us to this library, which contains a bunch of folders. I'll click Application Support, and then I'll scroll down until I get to GIMP. So here is GIMP. It'll probably be collapsed for you guys, so expand that, and here you'll see 2.10. So this is the folder we need to replace. So the first thing we wanna do is back up this 2.10 folder in case we wanna restore GIMP's defaults. So if we decide we don't wanna use photo GIMP settings, we can just bring this 2.10 folder back here to this GIMP folder, and that will restore those settings. So to back up this folder, I'll go to File, New Finder Window, and just navigate to a location on my computer where I wanna back this up. I'm just gonna to go to my desktop, click the little gear icon and go to new folder. And I'll type GIMP 210 backup, hit the enter key, and I'll double click to enter inside this folder. Then we'll come over here to our library folder and just click and drag this into the backup folder. So that will remove it from GIMP as well as bring it in over here. 
Now that this is backed up, let's exit out of here. So now I'll come back here to the downloads folder and come down here to the 2.10 folder. Come up here to the settings or the little gear icon. Go to copy 2.10. Come over here. We'll click to enter the GIMP folder, which is gonna be empty right now. Click the gear icon again, and then we'll go to paste item. So that will paste that here inside our GIMP folder. Let's open up GIMP. I'll just click the GIMP icon, and now you'll see our new splash screen. So this is what it's gonna look like when you first open it. Part of the reason this looks so funky is that this was built for a newer version of GIMP. So this is built for 2.10.20. We are using 2.10.14. So usually what you can do to fix this is start by coming over here to the toolbox and just drag this out. So now it is two separate rows. So this will not have group tools because group tools have not been introduced in this version yet. And if I come over here and click this little green icon, you'll see that that will fix this. So now it fits here and let me just drag this up so you guys can see it better. But this should open like this from now on. So if I were to close this out and reopen it in a new session, it should still look like this. But you'll see the canvas is less cluttered because there are less dialogues over here. So it will come with these four dialogues open by default. There's also going to be some new fonts here so you can scroll through these. And if I come over here to my paintbrush tool, which you'll see the new shortcut key for that is going to be B instead of P, so that matches Photoshop's. And let me come back here to the tool options, click on the brushes, you'll see there are some new brushes in here. And actually let's look through some of these tools as well just to see some of the new shortcut keys. So the move tool is now V, the crop tool is now just C instead of Shift C, and some of the shortcuts will be the same like the gradient tool and the text tool. And you guys can look through all these to see what the new shortcut keys are. So you'll notice this little message is going to be down here. That is something that was not removed until GIMP 2.10.18, so that's why that's there. And one last thing I wanna point out, if I go to Filters, Enhance, you'll see that one of the popular plugins that comes with this is Heal Selection, which of course is from the Resynthesizer plugin. So as I mentioned in the Windows version of this tutorial, I'm not gonna be using PhotoGimp in my tutorials from now on. I will continue to use the GIMP defaults. So for those of you who do wanna reset back to the default, let me show you how to do that. So we'll start by coming over here and just exiting out of GIMP. So here's that 2.10 folder, and we're just going to click on that, right click, and go to move to trash. You can also use the little gear icon. Then we'll come over here to the finder menu and go to file, new finder window. Come over here to desktop or wherever you saved your backup. Command C to copy that. Come over here, command V to paste. And the next time you open GIMP back up, it should be set to the default. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.